It's lovely to see you along this evening. You're very welcome to our evening gospel service here in Clougher Valley Free Presbyterian Church. Good to see you here. We're going to have our opening hymn. It's a hymn 250, and it's up on the screen there now. 250, whosoever heareth, shout, shout the sound, send the blessed tidings all the world around, spread the joyful news wherever man is found, whosoever will may come. The great offer of the gospel, whosoever will may come. So we're going to stand and sing together, please, this evening. Let's stand, please, and sing your very best. good singing to start us off this evening. We're going to have a wee word of prayer now, uh, so let's just bow our heads and close our eyes, and we're going to ask the Lord to bless the meeting tonight, and you pray along if you know the Lord as your own and personal Savior, you pray along and ask the Lord to undertake for the service this evening. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we just bow in your presence in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for each one gathered in here this evening, Lord. We thank you for that hymn that we've just sung about the whosoever will. We thank you, Lord, that it's a, the invitation of the gospel. Uh, Lord, thy word says that all that the Father giveth me shall come unto me, and whosoever cometh unto me I will in no wise cast out. We thank you, Lord, that the Lord Jesus Christ laid down his life for the world at the cross of Calvary. And Lord, we thank you that he gave his life for the whosoever. And, O oh God, we pray tonight, Lord, even as we come into your presence, that you would help us, O oh God, Lord, as we would come to worship you. We acknowledge, Lord, our sin and our failings and our weaknesses, Lord. We acknowledge, O oh God, that, Lord, there is nothing good in us. But we come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We come, O oh God, in his name that is above every name. And we thank you, Lord, that through his name we have an entrance into thy throne room. Jesus saith, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Lord, we pray tonight that you will bless everyone who's gathered in from the youngest to the oldest. We pray for those, Lord, that are listening online at home that cannot be here for whatever reason. We pray that you'll bless them where they are. And Lord, this service, Lord, will be an encouragement to them, a strengthening to them. They'll know your presence with them where they are. Lord, we pray for those who um, are unable to even listen in, Lord, for some 
reason or other, O oh God, that takes them away from the house of God. Lord, bless them, we pray. We think of your people especially who can't be here because of sickness or some other reason. We pray that you will be with them and that you will bless them and, and help them at this time. Lord, we pray for any in tonight, Lord, that are outside of Christ, Lord, who don't know you as their own and personal Savior. We pray, Lord, that you would even touch their hearts tonight and speak to them, Lord, and open up their hearts to hear your word, we pray. And we just pray especially, Lord, for the Reverend McIntyre as he brings your word tonight. Lord, we pray that you will just help him. You will give him the words to say and the thoughts to think, Lord. You will give him a, a clear mind. And Lord, oh God, we pray that you will fill him with God, the Holy Spirit, and you will bless him indeed, Lord, as he delivers the word that you have delivered to him even tonight, Lord. We think of other places, Lord, across our land where your word's going to be preached faithfully tonight, Lord, or where it's already gone forth, Lord. We pray just that you will bless it and that you will bless those that have heard. And Lord, we pray that it will do that work, Lord, that you have sent it to accomplish. Lord, bless tonight, we pray, across our land. We pray, Lord, that you will remember our Queen, Lord, our royal family, Lord. We pray for our government. We think, oh God, even, Lord, of the world, Lord, and the turmoil that is ongoing, Lord, across the world in different places. But we think especially of Ukraine and Russia tonight, and we pray for your people there. We pray for those engaged, Lord, and uh, reaching out, Lord, and in meeting the needs that are there. Lord, we pray that you will bless your people, bless your servants, bless those that are seeking to reach out and to help at this time of great need. Oh God, we pray that you will bring peace again to our troubled world. And Lord, we leave all of this in your care and in your keeping now. We pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to come to our next hymn, uh, please. Our next hymn, uh, hymn number 235. On the happy golden shore where the faithful part no more when the storms of life are over, meet me there. Where the night dissolves away into pure and perfect day, I am going home to stay. Meet me there. Are you going home to be with the Lord one day? Have you got that confidence in your heart that you're going to go home to heaven and that's going to be your eternal uh, abode? Well, this is what this hymn is talking about. And you think about the words tonight as you sing them uh, along this evening. 235, and we'll stand pleased to sing.
Let us read the scriptures. We're turning to the Gospel of John, chapter 12, and we will read from the verse number 20. John, chapter 12, and we're going to read from the verse number 20. John chapter 12 and the verse 20. And there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. The same came therefore to Philip, which was of Bethsaida of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. Philip cometh and telleth Andrew, and again Andrew and Philip tell Jesus. And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this cause came I unto this hour. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. The people therefore that stood by and heard it said that it thundered. Others said, an angel spake to him. Jesus answered and said, this voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. This he said, signifying what death he should die. The people answered him, We have heard out of the law that Christ abideth forever. And how sayest thou, the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is the Son of Man? Then Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while ye have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. While ye have light, believe in the light, that ye may be the children of light. These things spake Jesus, and departed, and did hide himself from them. But though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him. That the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord, who hath believed our report, and to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore they could not believe, because that Isaiah said again, He hath blinded their eyes and hardened their heart that they should not see with their eyes nor understand with their heart and be converted and I should heal them. These things said Isaiah when he saw his glory and spake of him. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also, many believed on him. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him lest they should be put out of the synagogue for they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. And he that sent me, and he that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. I am come a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. Amen. We know that God will add his own blessing to the reading of his inspired and infallible word. It really is good to see you here tonight in the Lord's house. We bid you warmly welcome and those that have joined us through the live stream, it's good to have you joining us too. And we trust that each one would be blessed and that the Lord would speak to our hearts tonight through his truth. Uh, Do remember the prayer meeting Wednesday night followed by a meeting of session and committee. Next Lord's Day, the services will be at the the regular times. Uh, do remember the communicate members meeting on the 18th, the list of members and the question that will be asked uh, of you that night, um, that, that's on the screen as you leave and you'll be able to look at that and do make sure your name is on the list if you are a communicant member. Do bear in mind all the various prayer requests. Um, 
We'll have the next slide, please. Yes, the drive-in mission in Ochnacloy is on, and uh, that's during the week, so, so do remember that. Our, our sister, Mrs. Alvaro Robinson, is testifying tomorrow night, uh, so do remember her in your prayers, and, and you can go along and support Alvaro as she testifies tomorrow evening. And also, Nick, from next Sunday evening, uh, we're going to begin our special month of testimonies, and our brother, Mr. Alistair Hamilton from Balamina, will be bringing his testimony next week. And as you can see, we have various testimonies lined up for the month of May. And do use the opportunity to invite others along to the uh, services to hear how the Lord has graciously changed the lives of others through his gospel. And we're going to hand back to our brother uh, Neville now for another hymn. Mr. McIntyre, 225, you can see it there on the screen. Uh, Have you any room for Jesus, he who bore your load of sin? As he knocks and asks admission, sinner, will you let let him in? A lovely hymn of invitation, Uh, invitation to you, asking the question, have you let the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart and into your life? So we're going to stand, you're singing very well, so we'll stand again and sing this hymn together, please.
Thank you. Neville, really appreciate your help tonight leading the service. Let's turn in God's Word once again to that passage that we read from John's Gospel, chapter 12. And our text will be found in the verses 35 and 36 of John's Gospel, chapter 12. So let's just read those verses together again. Then Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while ye have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. While ye have light, believe in the light, that ye may be the children of light. These things spake Jesus and departed and did hide himself from them. These things spake Jesus and departed and did hide himself from them. God's final call, the day Jesus spoke and then hid himself from the people so that they would hear him no more. Let's just pray. Father in heaven, we pray for your help as we come to look at this subject tonight. We will know the power of God and the infilling of thy spirit. We pray that eternity would be stamped on every heart and upon every mind and upon every eye that time would cease to be, that we would get our priorities straightened as to the things that really matter in the world. Lord, have mercy upon each soul tonight. Father, I pray that the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart would be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. If this was to be your last week on God's earth, would you do anything differently? We're at the beginning of a week, and if you were to be dead by this day next week, and you knew that today, would you change anything? If you were going to take your final journeys to work, if you were going to sit at mealtimes with your family during the course of this week, Would you do anything differently? Would you change anything now? As you think of your routine, as you think of your plans, as you think of what you intend to do during the course of this week, would you follow the same pattern if you knew it was going to be your last week? What changes would you make? I am sure if we could tell the future, and of course we can't, God mercifully doesn't give us that power, for it would be a dreadful thing to know what the future held even a day from now. But if we were to know the future and if we were to know this for sure is going to be my last week, I'm sure there would be some changes. I'm sure we would look at things differently. You see, here in John chapter 12, the Lord Jesus Christ quite literally is is in his last week. He's in his last week. He's facing the cross. He's facing Calvary. He's nearing the end. And whenever we come over into chapter 13, he's washing the disciples' feet. We're now at, at the upper room, and that's where we are at John chapter 13. And so the Lord is just a few hours away from Calvary. And as he approaches his last week, He's preaching, he's ministering, he's exhorting souls, he's bringing God's word to the people. He was the one that said he needed to work while it is day, for the night cometh when no man is work, no man can work. And right up to the very end, he has spent serving his father and serving the souls of others. But then we reach this moment when he brought his father final public message. Oh yes, he would speak to the disciples, but he wouldn't speak to a a gathering again before the cross. And as he brought this final word, verses 35 and 36, we are told that he departed and did hide himself from them. And what is so particularly solemn about this? Christ spoke for the final time in his final week to a public gathering. But this would be the last opportunity that these people who heard him 
would have to get right with God. This would be their final call. And it really doesn't matter how long these people lived from this moment in time. What matters is this, they would never again hear the Lord speaking as they heard him speak at that point in time. You see, the real solemnity of the message is this. Yes, any one of us could be in our final week. Nobody can say with certainty that we'll be alive this time tomorrow, let alone this day next week. None of us can say that for certain. But for those who are saved and know the Lord as Redeemer, the thrill is this. Whatever happens to us with regard to this mortal body, we know that it's going to be absent from the body, present with the Lord. That's the hope. That's the assurance that the Christian has. But those that are not saved, if this was to be your final week, you're facing certain judgment, for there is no hope. That's the thing that you need to be aware of. And I pray that that thought would settle upon your mind because that's reality. You might think of the things that are reality tonight. You might think of the things re relating to uh, the bills you have to pay and, and affairs to sort out and all the things that go on that make up life. And these things are reality, but this is a greater reality because everything else is just going to fade away and you're going to stand before God. And what if this was to be the last time when you would hear the gospel? When the Lord would hide himself from you? What if this were to be the last time when God's Spirit would strive with you? And it is possible to live for months and for years and to be as sure of hell as if you were in it because God's Spirit doesn't always strive with man. For Jesus hid himself from these people. So let's think about this final call, what we can learn from it. And I have to preach to you as if this was your final call. In fact, every gospel preacher should preach every sermon as if it was the last sermon that every sinner would hear and if it was the last sermon that he himself should preach. Because that's the importance of your soul and that's the value of your soul. And that's the urgency of this message. God's final call. Let's look at the revelation expounded. In this final call, the Lord presented to these people, what was it that he spoke to them about? What was the message? The message had to do with the light. And he said in verse 35, Yet little while is the light with you. Walk while ye have the light, lest darkness come upon you. He presented the light to them. He said, you've only got a little while. The light's only with you for a little while. Christ is only with them for a time. He's only with them for a period. He said, while you have this opportunity, come to the light. But what is the light and who is the light? That's the question. And of course, we know that the, the light is Christ. He is the light. He talked here about the light that would come from his cross. He said in verse 32, And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. And there in these final words that he would present to a public gathering, he forecast and prophesied of the cross and how he would be lifted up. And they knew what he was talking about because the people said to him in verse 34, we have heard out of the law that Christ abideth forever and how sayest thou the Son of Man must be lifted up? How can the Son of Man be lifted up if he's going to live forever? If he is the Son of God, how can he be lifted up on that cross? And of course, they didn't understand that that cross would be at the very heart of redemption for them, redemption for mankind, redemption for a lost and a ruined world. He lifted up the, the light of the cross. Whenever you hear the gospel preached, it is the light that comes from Calvary that must be lifted up. 
that Jesus Christ went to that cross and there he shed his precious blood for you, even for you, that his hands and feet were punctured for you and his brow was crowned with that crown of thorns for you. And he went through that horrible darkness where his father turned his back on him and he did it for your sins. My sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought, my sin not in part but the whole is nailed to his cross and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Oh, my soul, oh, is it well with your soul? It can only be well with your soul whenever you come to the light that flows from Calvary's cross. The Lord, in presenting himself as the light to these people, presented the, the glory of God. Because we come to verse 41 and notice what he says. And this is a, a summary of the things the Lord was saying. These things said his eyes when he saw his glory and spake on him. And this is the glory of Christ he's referring to. And he takes the reader right back to the Old Testament and he says, this light, this glory, this glory that will come to the cross, this light comes from Christ, this light which is Christ, this light is the light that Isaiah saw. And what did Isaiah say? Well, we're told in the year that King Uzziah died in Isaiah chapter 6 that Isaiah had this vision of God's holiness. He saw a throne. He, he saw the cherubim and seraphim. He, he heard their voices, holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, which is and which was and which is to come. He had this sight of Christ that few mortal men have ever seen and while in the Old Testament that is presented as the view of Jehovah, the view of God, it was Christ he saw. It was the glory of Christ because this verse says these things said Isaiah when he saw his glory and as Isaiah was melted and as he cried out, woe is me, I am an unclean man. I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. My eyes have seen the Lord as he realized how wicked he was in the light of the holy God. It was the presence of Christ he was in. The same Christ who is here. He was melted. This is the revelation. Christ and all of his glory. Christ and all of his love. Christ and all of his power. These were the people who were with Christ right leading up to the cross, and some of them would have been among that crowd who would cry out, crucify him, crucify him. But is this light with you today? Is this light still here? Oh, we know Christ is not here physically in his person. He's here through the ministry of the Spirit, but we don't see him in the flesh as these people saw him. Is this still relevant for you? Do you still see his glory now? Oh, you do. Because we come down to uh, John chapter 15 and the verse 26, the Lord would say this to the disciples just a, a little while later. And notice what he says there in John 15, 26 and 27. But when the Comforter has come, he's talking about the Holy Spirit. He says, I'm going to send the Comforter. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. When the Comforter has come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me, and ye also shall bear witness. And he's speaking to the disciples, and he said, after I have gone, you'll get the Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will be the Spirit of truth. He'll speak of me, and you'll bear witness of me. And wherever you go, and wherever you preach me, and wherever you present the Word of God, you will present my glory. And of course the Lord said, where the two and the three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst. And therefore, the place where the gospel is preached is a very special place. There's no place like it. It's a very special place for the unconverted. You're here tonight, you're not saved. You're in a place where the gospel is presented, where Christ is, where Christ is being testified of where Christ is being presented, where this light is being revealed for your darkened heart. You see, Jesus is passing this way. Every time the gospel is preached, Christ is here. He's passing by. And he moves from seat to seat, and he moves from heart to heart, and he moves from mind to mind. And he's here 
He's here through his word. He's here through his spirit. He's here through the witness of Christians around you who are praying for you. The Lord is right here in this gathering in all of his glory because his word is being preached. His truth is being presented. That's the revelation expounded. Let's just move on and think about the response exhorted. This final call involved a revelation, but the Lord exhorted these people to respond to the revelation. Wherever God's word is presented, there must be a response. God's word demands a response. There is always a response to the word of God. In the verse 36 of John chapter 12, the Lord required of these people that they believe. While you have light, he said, believe in the light. While the light is with you, believe in the light. While I am here, believe. While you have this opportunity, believe. When this word is presented, come. Of course, there is the inference here that the light wasn't always going to be with them. So the time was now. The time to believe was today because the Bible Say is today, if you will hear my voice, harden not your heart. This this light that we're to walk in, this light that we're to believe, this light that we're to embrace. What was this light? Well, it was the opposite of darkness. And if you're following this through in your scriptures, just come to Ephesians chapter five. I, I want to show you something here from. Ephesians chapter 5, this contrast between light and darkness because the Ephesian people were a people who were once in darkness and then they came to the light. They came to Christ and they were changed. They were transformed. This darkness is described in the verse 3 there of Ephesians 5. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no whoremonger nor unclean person or covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. And there he describes the, the darkness of the, the pagan world, the idolatry, the, the foolishness of it, the covetousness of it, the immoral wickedness of that old world, the darkness of that old world. And of course, this world continues to be a dark world. And there is a darkness in your heart. It's the darkness of sin. Whatever you've done or you haven't done, I know this, that you're a sinner in the sight of God because we all are sinners in the sight of God. And there's a darkness in the heart of the unconverted man. And then we come to verse 8. For ye were sometime darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. There was a change. There was a transformation. The light had come. They responded to the gospel. They came to the Lord Jesus and they embraced him. And you know, Jesus Christ is coming again. This one who spoke to these people, he's coming again. We don't see him with eyes of flesh today, but one day everyone is going to see him and we are told that when he returns, every eye will see him. And in 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 4 to 5, Paul talked to the believers at Thessalonica and he said, but ye brethren are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. If ye are all the children of light and the children of the day, we are not of the night nor of the darkness. You see, the people who are going to be terrified when Jesus comes again, are the people that are in the darkness because they're not going to be able to bear that light. Christ will come, the light of the world. And in their darkness, they'll just be like those creatures that live in dark holes. They can't bear light. They cower away from the light. The creatures of the night. If you're not saved, you're a creature of the night. You're a creature of darkness, a creature of sin. And whenever Christ comes and you see him, you'll be terrified because the Lord 
has returned. And some people say the Lord will return as a thief in the night. Well, actually, he is not a thief in the night for the Christian. The Bible does not teach that Christ comes as a thief in the night for the Christian. Because a thief is something we're afraid of. A thief is something that terrorizes us. A thief is something that strikes alarm into every heart. The Lord doesn't come in that way for the people of God. A thief comes with surprise. The Lord will not surprise the people of God when he comes. Because we watch and we wait, we anticipate his coming. If you are here tonight and if you are a saved person, if you profess to know Jesus Christ as your saviour, you are not in the slightest bit worried by the fact that Christ is coming. In fact, you are praying as, as John prayed at the very end of Revelation, even so come Lord Jesus. And we talked at the beginning about would we change anything if this was our, our last week? Well, actually, we should be living every week as if it was our last, living every week as if Christ would come this week, living every week prepared. And if you're not living like that, then you need to seriously examine your own heart and your own soul before God because... He is never a thief in the night for a child of God. But if you're here and if you're not saved, well, he'll come as a thief in the night for you. And he'll come to be your judge. But when you respond to the light, when you come to the light, you face eternity and you face the second coming of Christ with that sense of peace and security. And that's what it is to be in the light. So have you come to the light? Have you trusted Christ as your saviour? Are you going to respond tonight? You know, there will be a response. You'll either say yes or you'll say no. You'll either come to the light or you'll darkness, but you, you will make a choice and what will your choice be? Now we come to the retribution experienced. Because whenever we look here at this verse 35, notice what he says. Walk while ye have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. Come to the light, because the darkness is coming. And then at the end of verse 36, the darkness did come when Jesus departed and did hide himself from them. How is this worked out in practice? How is it that Christ can hide himself from a people? You see, the Lord says, any manner of sin can be forgiven and will be forgiven. And whether it be a adultery or, or whether it be drunkenness or whether it be drug addictions or, or whether it be, be murder even, all of these sins can be forgiven. But there is one sin that can't be forgiven. One sin that God won't forgive. And that is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. And what is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit? Blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is to say no to the gospel for the last time. Oh, I know God comes in grace again and again and he speaks and he speaks and he speaks and he calls and he gives opportunity and there's gospel meetings. But then there comes that moment, that line that marks a man or a woman's place between heaven and hell. And once you cross that line, there's no hope. You said no for the final time. And that's blasphemy against the Holy Ghost because God's Spirit doesn't always strive with man. The Scriptures teach that. I remember hearing about a man who was in a gospel meeting many years ago. And there was a mission in the area and he came to the mission and he actually came night after night to the mission. And he brought his two daughters with him, two, two young girls, and he, he, he brought them to the meetings. And... He was unmoved by the ministry, but yet he kept coming, he kept coming, he kept coming. And the evangelist felt persuaded, I need to talk to this man. He has come in night after night to hear the gospel, and he has brought these girls with him. What is his position with God? And he spoke to him, and the man said many years ago, he said, I was under terrible conviction of sin. I knew I was a sinner, I knew I was lost. I knew I needed Christ to be my saviour, but 
I couldn't come to Christ. And the whole thing, it just made me miserable and unhappy. I couldn't sleep and I couldn't eat. And the whole thing just wore me down. And he said, I did something. I was out in the field, he said. He was a farmer. And he said, I, I, I took my cap off and I, I reached my fist up to God. And I said, take the Holy Spirit away. I can't have this anymore. And all of a sudden, he said, peace came. Never once since have I felt the need to be saved. But he said, these girls, he said, they, they, they need to hear the gospel. He kept bringing them night after night. As far as he was concerned, his soul was lost. That's right? an example of what it is to turn away from the Savior for the last time with with a vigorousness, with a opposition to the gospel, refusing Christ as your Savior. Ephesians 4.19 talks about those that are past feeling. And one of the marks of someone who, who passes that line is they have no feeling. They have no conviction. They have no conscience. They can hear the gospel, not a bit troubled. Know they're lost, accept the truth. Doesn't seem to bother them. They know if they were to die this week, if you were to die this week, you'd be lost, not troubled. Does that trouble you? The fact that your soul will be lost? Oh, it ought to trouble you. I pray that it will. I pray that Spirit will awaken your soul and your conscience. But I tell you something. If you know tonight you need to be a Christian and if that troubles you, you need to come now. Don't put it off because this might just be your final call. You know, this message is it's not applicable for people that have never heard the gospel. It's not applicable for people that aren't church-going people. It's not applicable for the brothels and for the dens of iniquity. It's applicable for church-going people. It's applicable for people who sit under the sound of the ministry of God's people, God's word. It's applicable for people who come dressed in their Sunday best and carry a Bible and sing hymns and yet they're not right with God. Turning away from the gospel the whole way because you look through the scriptures, the people who committed this sin had the greatest of privileges. Cain was the first person who committed this sin. And Cain was a man who was brought up there by Adam and Eve who had, who had heard the truth. His, his brother Abel knew the truth. And Cain knew the truth as well, but he chose to go his own way. God put a mark upon him after he slew his brother and he went out to perdition. He lived so much longer than his brother and he became successful, but his soul was lost. That's one example. Think of Judas Iscariot, a man who lived amongst the disciples, a man who was trusted amongst the disciples, a man whom the disciples would never, ever have recognized as a deceiver, as a betrayer of the blessed Savior, a man who had darkness in his heart, and yet he was part of that circle of men who were so privileged. He saw the miracles. He heard the things that Jesus said. He was in all likelihood here at this moment in time. And yet, he crossed that line and his soul was lost. This is applicable for people who come to gospel meetings, who hear the gospel, who sin against their day of grace. The Lord talked about cities. He talked about towns. He talked about Bethsaida. He talked about Chorazin. He talked about Capernaum. He talked about places where he walked, where the walls heard the echo of his voice. People lived in these streets and people lived in these homes and people lived along the seashore and he preached and he ministered there. And he said, if, if Sodom and Gomorrah had seen the things that you see, they would have been saved. But you have sinned against Christ, Sodom and no preacher. And you have the Savior. And you turn away from this message. And there's no hope for you. He said, you'll be cast down to hell. I don't think anyone really knows where some of those towns are today. They're gone, wiped off the map, wiped off into oblivion and with those religious people who had their religiosity, but they rejected the Savior. And the Savior hid himself from them. If this is your final gospel meeting, does that change anything? Could be your final gospel meeting. 
Could be the last time the Spirit will speak. Could be the last time the Spirit will strive. Could be the last time that you will feel the slightest desire to come to Christ. Could be the last time. And if this is the last time, your soul will be lost. For the Bible says, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? There's no escape if you neglect Christ. Thank God we have the light. Thank God the word is presented. Thank God you are alarmed, and I know you are. But you need to come. Receive Christ tonight before it be too late. Let's bow for prayer. If you're here tonight without the Savior, you don't know the Lord. Will you lift your heart to the Lord? We exhort you to do this very thing. To put your faith in Christ alone. Will you pray with me? Lord, I'm a sinner. I deserve hell. Thank you for Jesus Christ who died for me. Lord, save me. Wash me in the blood of your dear son. Will you do that? If you want to talk to me afterwards, you can. I'll be here. But don't leave without coming to Christ. Your soul is too important to trifle with. Eternity is so long. And there's either God's heaven or God's hell. What will you do with Christ tonight? Father, work in hearts and in souls, we pray. For Christ's sake, amen. We have one last hymn. O sinner, the Savior is calling for thee long, long. Hath he called thee in vain? He called thee when joy lent its crown to thy days. He called thee in sorrow and pain.
blessing keep thy hand upon us through the course of this week. We pray that thou wouldest undertake for every gospel effort and may we return on Wednesday night for the prayer meeting and the blessing of God. May every dear unsaved friend of the grace to trust thee tonight. Father, I pray that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the eternal spirit would be our abiding portion now and evermore. Amen.